authorship, somebody owning a piece of copy, right? So if you've written a piece of copy, you put it on the site, somebody then copies that content and posts it on a higher authority website, then they are basically stealing the authorship from it. And I've been hearing that quite a bit at the moment. So when it comes to the the copyright and ownership of a piece of content, how's Google getting around this? You know, they never have. I've worked with a lot of news sites. And what I don't understand is if they can get Twitter a fire hose, so they get Twitter content instantly, why can't they give news publishers a fire hose to let them publish their content to Google? Google marks it as the original piece of content. And then anything else that comes up with its writing or its author or whatever just doesn't get treated the same, right? But they don't do that. I don't know why they don't do that because right now, technically, they can't do that. So Google doesn't really try to beat that problem. They don't try to fix that problem. They told everyone to put canonicals on their, their um, syndicated content, right? Now they tell everybody don't syndicate. Well, they're not going to stop syndicating. That's not going to happen. That's not an answer. But um, so that's always been a problem. It's always been a problem that sites, they don't even have to be, have more authority. They can just have a bunch of fake links to them until they get caught. So there's a lot of sites that get scraped by garbage sites, right? And they have tons of bot links to them and they rank for a while and that person doesn't care because they're just running ads. That's all they cared about. So um, Google, it's just not a problem that Google seems to be willing to solve, unfortunately. So, and it does get into the myth of authorship though. So the, the author patents were from Google Plus and Google Plus at the time, I did a whole bunch of articles on this back then. It was an identity platform and it wasn't just Google, it was all over the world. They're going to get rid of they're going to get rid of passwords. It's called the in our country it was called National Trusted Identities in um, uh, something in cyberspace and STIC. And uh, they're going to, and Google was one of the first approved. There was a White House blog about it. Uh, companies to do this, and so Google Plus. Remember, everyone had to have a login to Google. Like you couldn't use a Google product without a Google Plus. That's because it was your identity that they were tracking. So what they were going to do is they were going to get rid of the password. You'd have an identity provider. Twitter was going to try to be one. Facebook was going to try to be one. Equifax was one of the first approved with Google. PayPal is one of the first approved with Google. And the provider, the identity provider, the IDP, would validate you to the website. Are you over 13? Are you able to like use this platform? You know, Are you over 21 for an alcohol site? But they'd also track you and follow you. Unfortunately, they also have all that data. And no real laws to govern it. They'll, they'll just read the, the ULA, and that was supposed to be the only protection. Um, and then Snowden came out, and that all stuff went away. I don't know if they're related, but they felt like at the time they probably were. So that's where that author patent came from, when we used to connect ourselves to, to websites as authors. And they knew who the author was. They also knew a whole lot about you. They knew your schooling. They knew your jobs. They knew, they knew tons of stuff about you, because everything you used in Google was now run through Google+. That died with Google+. Plus. There was, there's no author patent anymore like that that's working. And if you think about it, it would take be so difficult for Google to keep up with every author in the world in every language and every dialect, every pseudonym they use, every time they publish a piece of content, right? So what's much easier? They can use entities to know if the article, compared to the other articles in the corpus, writes with similar expertise. And that's where expertise comes from, right? So it's like, and I know I'm taking a tangent here, but just when you mentioned authorship, it's like, because there's a lot of confusion in the industry that they're somehow tracking every author, which doesn't make sense. That's scale. Remember, we talked, I said earlier about scale, right? And you agree. So they use the entities to know if you're writing about this with expertise. That's what they do. 